HF Aviation voice communications take place in what is commonly known as the shortwave band. These signals travel great distances and are used by civilian and military flights for long-range communications. Today on Frugal Radio, we will look at three types of voice service you can tune into with your shortwave radio, HF receiver, software-defined radio, or a web SDR. Volmet is an aviation-specific weather broadcast. Moira, which stands for Major World Air Route Area, where I will show maps and charts of the frequencies used for aircraft communications across the globe. And military nets. We will even listen to a United States Air Force broadcast later in this episode. When I first started monitoring HF in the 1990s, I discovered I could listen in on the US Coast Guard patrolling the coast of Florida from my location in Ireland. I heard airliners of all different sizes as they crossed large continents like Africa and communicated while they were transiting over the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. Thirty years later, I still enjoy monitoring these signals. With the HF spectrum covering around 25 megahertz of bandwidth, it's important to know where to look to find these aviation-related communications. As it happens, there are 14 dedicated bands that are set aside for the use of aeronautical communications. This is where you will want to look for activity. When viewing these bands in a software-defined radio, it's easy to see which frequencies are active on your FFT and waterfall displays. I find the 5, 8, 11 and 13 MHz bands tend to be the busiest, with the lower frequencies being used more at night, and it still amazes me that with simple and frugal equipment I can receive these signals from thousands of miles away. Aeronautical communications are always conducted in upper sideband, or USB for short. A lot of air traffic control communications over remote areas are now transmitted via satellite, and I will be showing you how to receive the satellite signals in an upcoming episode. However, aircraft still must maintain an active HF communication system as a backup. As a result, these frequencies are used every day, with flights checking in when entering oceanic areas and crossing FIR boundaries. In the last 24 hours, from my location here in Canada, I've heard both civil and military flights speaking to San Francisco and Tokyo as they cross the Pacific, flights in the Caribbean communicating with New York Radio, and Gander Radio in Newfoundland talking to aircraft crossing the Mid-Atlantic. One potentially useful way of finding out which bands are active is to check on some of the Volmet frequencies. These broadcast aviation meteorological information and some of the transmissions run 24-7. Shannon Volmet is broadcast from Ireland on the following frequencies and sounds like this. Cloud, Simu, broken at 3,000 feet. Tempo from 0 to 0, 0. The Royal Air Force also operate a Volmet station on 5450 and 11253 kHz. This is how it sounds. Bear in mind that I was receiving this signal from Canada, a distance of over 4,500 miles or more than 6,600 kilometers away. Next, we have the shared New York and Gander Volmet frequencies, although at this point, only Gander appears to be transmitting now, beginning at 20 minutes and 50 minutes past each hour. Visibility more than 6 miles, ceiling 3,000 broken, temporarily 2100 zero 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 until 0000. Zero 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 zero. The Canadian Air Force Volmet at Trenton Military Base transmits at 10 minutes past the hour on these frequencies. Winnipeg, Winnipeg, time one niner zero zero Zulu, wind three six zero at one zero, cut one six. Wind you may also come across some of the Russian Volmet frequencies which are listed here. Obviously, you won't understand them unless your Russian is better than mine. But these are the frequencies that you will often hear. There are also Volmets in Asia, South America, Africa and the Middle East. During good propagation conditions I have received numerous ones of these. The most up-to-date list I'm aware of is that compiled by William Hepburn which can be located at the DX Info Center website. A direct link is in the description below if you're interested in trying to receive them. 
Moira stands for Major World Air Route Areas and is designed to provide voice communications over vast spaces such as the world's oceans, deserts and other unpopulated regions where it's not possible to maintain VHF radio coverage. The North Atlantic is one of the most flown routes in aviation. When the world isn't dealing with major pandemics, there are thousands of aircraft transiting each day. You'll notice on the map here that NAT A, B, C, E and F cover the main areas of the Atlantic Ocean. At various times of the day, different frequencies will be in use. Generally though, these frequencies carry a reasonable amount of traffic, with satellite equipped aircraft primarily checking in with Shanwick, Santa Maria, Gander or New York along their route. NAT D covers the more northern parts of the Atlantic Ocean, over the Arctic Circle, across Norway, Greenland and northern Canada. Mostly I've heard Shanwick and Gander on this frequency, although many years ago I did receive Bodo. The Caribbean areas are handled by New York Radio and are also quite busy frequencies. You'll also hear the South Atlantic crossings on the frequencies listed in the SAT-1 and SAT-2 boxes. I haven't tried tuning into these recently, so I'm unsure which ground stations are still in use. South America is divided into two zones for HF aviation voice comms. That said, I have not attempted to monitor these frequencies, so I don't know how active they are these days. Again, if you have logged some of these frequencies, please mention it in the comments below. The Pacific frequencies still get plenty of use, especially in the busy CEP corridor or Central East Pacific corridor between the US West Coast and Hawaii. NP stands for North Pacific with SP being the South Pacific frequencies and at this time in history the CWP or Central West Pacific and North Pacific frequencies get a lot of radio check-ins from cargo airlines moving freight between Asia and North America. When I first started monitoring HF aviation communications in the 1990s, I would always try and receive the Southeast Asia frequencies. It brought much joy to me when I received signals from India and Indonesia with an old Yaesu FRG 7700 and 20 meter dipole set up in my mom's backyard in Ireland. From that location in Ireland, I could also receive the African stations daily. The 11300 kHz frequency for AFI-3 used to be particularly busy. I would monitor the aircraft bartering for flight levels from Cairo, Khartoum and Nairobi when it was all still on that net. Again, a lot of the traffic has moved to satellite by now, but I'm sure the HF check-ins are still taking place as they are in other areas of the world. Interestingly, the Europe, Russian and Middle Eastern frequencies are the ones I heard the least. Perhaps any viewers who monitor HF aviation comms regularly can comment below and let us know whether these frequencies are still used. Please bear in mind that the maps and frequencies listed here are now over 20 years old. Some frequency assignments have probably changed, but I know that the North Atlantic, Caribbean and Pacific ones shown in this video are still active. There is a link to all the maps that have been used in this video in the description below. When it comes to military communications, the USAF run an HF global communication system primarily using the four frequencies listed here. At one time, these frequencies were exceedingly busy. They still receive use with US assets requesting weather briefings and phone patches. There are also still emergency action messages or EAMs being transmitted. These are highly encoded messages that get authenticated and pass instructions to mission specialists on board tactical aircraft. In the last 24 hours, I have heard three of these frequencies being used. Let's listen to one message I received yesterday using a web SDR. It isn't just the USAF who use shortwave. The Royal Air Force run an HF net known as Flightwatch. The main base stations in the UK use the callsign architect. If you are lucky you may also hear Viper in the Falklands, Haven on Essential Island or Cyprus. 
Similarly, the Canadian Air Force have an HF system in place. On this set of frequencies you will hear the Canadian Forces aircraft including search and rescue missions. Occasionally a USAF aircraft will also call in on the Canadian frequency if it has not been able to raise someone on the HF global communication system net. I recently discovered an excellent frequency list online that focuses on HF aeronautical channels. As you can see here, there is an introduction explaining that the en route frequencies are primarily related to the major world air route areas and the off route frequencies are primarily assigned to the various world military users. The frequencies are divided into the bands I showed you earlier, making it easy to find channels in any given part of the HF spectrum. This is definitely a great resource to use for identifying the signals you receive and a link to this list which was updated just last month is in the description below. Still to come in the Monitoring Aviation Communication series will be tutorials on how to decode satellite ACARS, HF ACARS and VDL2 signals. We will also be looking at various options for flight tracking of civil and military aircraft with your software defined radio, including some exciting new developments. And of course, monitoring military communications primarily found in the UHF airband spectrum. On the channel, there will be some upcoming reviews on software defined radios, antennas, and we will explore the decoding of weather satellites from NOAA and the geostationary satellites that provide full disk images. As always, if this video has been useful to you, I'll ask that you hit the like button, share it with friends, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure you've clicked the notification bell to be alerted when new content comes available. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. For now, this is Frugal Radio, out.